Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new review. In front of me is a 2016 example of the Mark 7 Volkswagen Golf and it might just very well be the best Golf that Volkswagen has ever made. See, whilst the Mark 8 might be good and all with all its technology, there are some things about it that just can't beat the old Mark 7. In this video, I'm going to go through why it might be the perfect Golf for you and why it might beat some rivals such as the Skoda Octavia, the Seat Leon and the Ford Focus. So I say let's jump straight into it with the design of the Mark 7 Golf. So let's kick off this review with the design of the Mark 7 Golf. As you can see, the front end is pretty regular for a family car. There's nothing particularly interesting about it. However, on the other hand, there's nothing particularly ugly about it either. You have your sensors down there, your LED lights there, front parking sensors. It just looks pretty clean at the front. And there's nothing really to complain about. No weird lines, no weird curves. Just a modern family hatchback. If I move around to the side, it pretty much is Volkswagen Golf business as usual. And you get these nice rims with this match edition model, which sort of suit the red paint here. And again, it just looks very clean, very nice, nothing to complain about. You have one straight line that goes down the side of the car, making it look quite clean on the road, as it is quite a common sight. At the rear of the car, guess what? It's the same again. You have a proper exhaust down there, which is always nice. This is the TDI Blue Motion model, it has the 1.6 litre and I'll get into the engines and trims later on. But again, nice little line there and I think it is one of the cleanest looking family cars on the market. So nothing to complain about the design, but nothing really spectacular about it either. Next for this review, let's talk about the engine and the trim level that you get with this car and the whole of the Mark 7 Golf range. Now this car comes with 110 horsepower, 1.6 litre turbocharged diesel. Now it's fairly quick from revs as we demonstrate later with a little bit of driving footage but it's not i wouldn't say it's the engine pick of the range you can also get a one litre petrol a 1.2 litre petrol 1.4 litre petrol and a two litre petrol the diesels consist of well this 1.6 litre diesel and a more powerful two litre turbocharged diesel that i'd recommend for the high mileage drivers we actually had that in our 2018 skoda octavia vrs and if you click on the pop out banner the top right hand corner of the screen. screen you can watch that video where we test its performance to the max on some yorkshire country roads if you're thinking of getting that engine as it is the same next on my list let's talk about the trim levels that the mark 7 golf, golf comes with so the range kicks off with the s model which gets basic things such as air conditioning bluetooth and a 6.5 inch screen that is also in this car that we will demonstrate later as you move up the range as usual you get more bits and pieces such as climate control, satellite navigation, and these very smart looking wheels down here, as well as front and rear parking sensors. That goes up in SE, SEL, SEL Nav, and Match and Match Edition, like this car. And then you can, of course can go for your GTI, GTD, and GTE sporty variants of this car. Now let's move into the interior of the Mark 7 Golf. So as you can see, here you have a 6.5 inch infotainment screen, sort of dominates the center of the dash here. Now it might be outdated compared to the most recent Mark 8 Golf, but I would argue that it's actually a better system. See, the Mark 8 Golf has a more sort of touchscreen based system with very little buttons and they're all touch sensitive and with a voice control system that doesn't tend to work too well. Whereas this, you've got manual buttons here. So when driving on the move, it's much easier to press your radio. You want radio 2 on, there you go. You want to connect your phone or Bluetooth, there you go. You want to get somewhere quickly, there you go. The sat nav is intuitive for a 2016. You can put your new destination in. It's very easy. It's quite quick for the year, seeing now this car does date back from 2012. You can also go to your car information. So lower models such as the S and the SE come with this. The higher models such as this match edition car do not come with the sat nav like this one. In terms of in-cabin storage, you have this longer sort of area here with two cup holders and also the glove box it's a very decent size although it is full of stuff it just sort of shows how much you could fit in here and you do have a cd player which not a lot of cars come with now which is quite useful if you do like your cds obviously in terms of the door bins they are enough to fit some chewing gum but also it will be enough to fit a smaller bottle however larger bottles may not be able to fit and it do also bear in mind that it has this nice coating here not that your bottle will need to be comforted but it's just a nice touch in addition to this, here's under the armrest here, the all-important toilet paper is in there. Furthermore, you have this nice silver-coated sort of plate here. You pop that open, that gives you a little bit more storage. And in there, you have your AUX socket, 
and a USB for charging your all important devices on the road. And this car being a 2016 does not come with USB-C connection. That's not too big of a downer because after all, it is from 2016 with 2012 technology. Moving on to the driver's seat, you have this really nice Nappa leather steering wheel that feels sort of premium with Volkswagen being sort of a premium brand because you do have to pay that extra over the likes of the Skoda Octavia and the Seat Leon, which are part of the same group. Also note that on higher models, such as the GTI, you get a matte black finish here instead of the silver, but I would recommend the silver as if you have a ring on, you can easily scratch the piano black sort of effect on here. Next, let's look at the dials. And as you can see, no real digital display, just a small information screen here with most, which uh, most Volkswagen Group cars of this era come with. And then two nice, clear, easy to read dials to show your speed and your revs. So nothing to complain about there. But bear in mind, it's not quite as fancy as some of the latest generation Octavias and Golfs that you might find. Now I say, let's talk about one of the areas where the Mark 7 Golf actually aces its newer generation. And this is with the material. So here you have these lovely soft touch materials. See, not too much of a noise here. Really sort of leatherette effect here. A nice chrome sort of silvery strip here. And on the door tops, again, very nice squishy sort of leather effect. However, as you go down lower, it doesn't get so great. You have this awful, cheap, scratchy plastic. And it's not just there, it's, it's here, it's here. And even this sort of moves a bit. So the quality is good, although it's Volkswagen Group business as usual. Down low, they cheap out, but you're not really going to be touching down here when you're, you know, being a passenger. You're going to have your arm on there. You're going to be touching there. So it is a complaint, but it's not the end of the world. It's just that the Volkswagen Golf being the more premium one, you would expect it to have a little bit nicer materials as it does. A very important aspect of motoring journalism is, of course, the space in the car, which we actually haven't covered any of yet. So I thought, let's jump in the front and see how a six foot me fits in the front of the Mark 7 Golf. As you can see, we've got loads of adjustment. I can go all the way back here, probably out of shot. But really, the average person sits about here, which is, you know, a little bit cramped for me. I put it back a bit. I've got loads of room. I put it back a little bit more. I've got tons more room than a six foot me needs. So if you're you know, six foot two, six foot three, you'll probably get on okay in the Golf. You've got manual adjustment, which is okay for a once 30,000 pound car, I guess. And you also got height adjustment in the seat, just lift you up or lower you down if you're shorter. Obviously, I have it quite raised up. Legroom is brilliant. Headroom, I've got it quite up now, so let's put it all the way down like that. As to sort of, I would have it about here. Headroom, I have a couple of inches of headroom, so it's acceptable because I am quite tall, so the average person should not have an issue in the front of the Golf. Sticking with the theme of space inside the Mark 7 Golf, I've moved into the back seat to see how it compares with other rivals. Now, this is not such a great aspect of the Golf. Whilst headroom, I have a good three inches of headroom being six foot in the back. I mean, that's brilliant. The non-sloping roof really helps with that. And that would beat the likes of a Scourge Octavia VRS, which has a seriously sloping roof, and even the Seat Leon, which takes a bit more of a sporty edge on this car. The not so great thing, fair enough, I have the seat, you know, at my height in the passenger seat. So this is a six foot height. I can put my feet under the chair, so that's good. But my ankles do sort of touch the lower bit of the chair there. And whilst it's okay for some shorter journeys, you might get a bit of leg cramp on some really long cross country tours in this car, if you're my height, of course. If you're a child or a smaller adult, I don't think you're gonna have a problem in this car. Really, for the size, it's pretty good. And the shape is quite practical back here for everyday use. Whilst most of the rear space in the Mark 7 Golf is at least acceptable, if not pretty good for an average sized family car, the middle seat here is somewhere that's not so great to be, especially if you're my sort of height. See, sitting three people in the back of the Golf, especially with this car seat here, is quite a squeeze if you're in the middle here. You have a big, big, nasty hump in the floor where the transmission mounts are. So leg room really is quite restricted. So I would say if you need to carry three in the back, the Skoda Octavia is a much better example of a family car. Although it has the hump, it has a lot more leg room in general. So you will be quite a bit more comfortable in that. And the Golf does have a nice armrest here though, with two cup holders, little rubbery bits in to help your drinks, well, help them stop spilling really. If you have a sharp brake or a sharp acceleration on longer journeys. But yeah, middle seat, probably avoid it if you can. 
but for shorter journeys, it's okay. Before we move on to the boot, there's one more thing worth mentioning in the rear of the Golf, and that is that you don't get the nice, you know, soft leatherette sort of plastics, soft touch plastics as you do in the front. They do cheap out a little bit, which is understandable. Most cars do it, so it's not a massive thing, but it would be nice for the rear passengers to have a little bit more, you know. They have a fabric armrest here, which is nice, and some cars will get the leather armrest, but um, it is not so nice to touch as being in the front. I say let's finally move on to the boot because this is probably the worst thing about the Golf. Now it's not awful, okay? This boot is 380 litres big and it's a nice shape, you can see, you know, it's easy to load stuff through. Tiny little low lip but really not too bad. You've got underfloor storage here where you have a spare tyre which is, you know, kind of groundbreaking for today's family cars. So I mean, credit to Volkswagen there. You can fit another two of these sort of crates here. So you can fit three medium sized suitcases, but the boots in terms of size, not in terms of practicality, is pretty good. It just really la lags behind other rivals. So the Skoda Octavia, pretty much double the size boot almost of this car. If you want space, buy a Skoda Octavia. If you don't need space, this is probably a more usable sort of loading area. You have through loading here, so you can load longer items such as ladders or uh, skis or something through there. Also, this umbrella, we could put that through there if you really needed to. You do have handy little storage things here and here to put things like engine oil, washer fluid for those longer trips. So it's not too bad, but if you want outright space, avoid the Golf. Going on from the more negative aspects of the boot, this car actually has quite a, cool, quite a few cool features. They're quite handy. So when you lock the car, isn't that fancy? In addition to the handy folding and mirrors, you also have this little compartment under the seat. It doesn't come out very far, but you know, put your, put your treasures in there. Whilst it might not be so easy to carry babies in this car, folding down the rear seats is literally as simple as that. Lastly, in terms of the standing still shots, although you've seen this angle before of me handily popping the bonnet, you have hood struts on a once £30,000 car, okay, quite a lot of money, but for them to stay like that, you don't get that, really, not too much anymore. So, well done Volkswagen. It's also worth noting on the Golf that these doors don't open particularly wide for this sort of size family car. They're decent, but if you come here, you see it is at quite a bit of an angle. So this is going to be a problem for people with younger babies, may have to get the seat through, put it here. Obviously this is a booster, but you know, this gap here, you might not quite, and you'll be fiddling around and it just won't work. So if you have a younger baby, try something like a Skoda Octavia. it makes your life a lot more easy. As you can see now, I am in the Golf, not driving because that'd be a little bit illegal right now, but uh, I'm in the passenger seat. We're going over some pretty decent bumps now, sort of down here on the, on the grass and it handles them fairly well obviously you do get a shake through the cabin but i mean this is no by no means an off-roader um and it quite you know don't really feel too much just sort of soft as if you're on a little wave sort of going up and down sort of and now on some lighter gravel you barely feel it so the suspension is pretty good in this car so uh oh that is quite a big one but that is really big so it's you know not gonna bash on the car for it let's uh, hit some country roads And here we are onto the country roads of the wonderful Dorset that uh, a lot of you probably know I'm originally from. So it has decent pace. Obviously, this is the 1.6 litre diesel, so it's not going to be quite as peppy as the 2 litre diesel or even some of the petrol engines, which obviously will have a bit more get up and go. But if you were to really put your foot down, the Golf does move. It does go when you want it to. It has a five speed manual, as I filmed earlier. But it's more of a refined car it's not the kind of car you're going to be racing down these country lanes and you have you know because it's dorset you have quite a lot of little potholes sort of down there and about the place and it handles them quite well in the front here you don't particularly feel like you're being chucked about like you do in some other cars such as the skoda octavia vrs if you're in that car it's got a sporty suspension set up and it doesn't handle them so great whereas this car it's sort of tuned in a way to give you the maximum comfort and the least speed, but it does have enough when you need it. 
So once you're at cruising speed on any country road or a B road, the only thing I would note about the Golf is that this 1.6 litre diesel isn't quite as refined as we'd like it to be. It does make a slight droning noise and this is sort of constant, even if you're not accelerating and at higher speeds on roads such as motorways and dual carriageways, you do just hear a bit of a distant drone as if, you know, a tyre is slightly uh, mismatched or something like that. It's not that. It is the engine. It is rather vocal, I should say, but uh, if you can get past that, it is a good engine. It gets good miles per gallon, and especially in these days of these fuel prices, it's probably one of the picks of the range. But, um, this is an even smoother road, and you notice bumps even less. It's just really comfy, to be honest. It's not anything super exciting. You know, it's not a weekend rally car. It's not going to be plummeting down the motorway every Saturday. It's just a nice car to be in, and it's just it's just a pleasure to ride in to be honest so one last driving shot just to say that when you are on a faster road such as this one does get later down the line and roads such as the a35 a31 dual carriageway or even motorways the golf is at its best especially this diesel variant you know you go over some road like this it's just super smooth it handles well although i would say if you want a little bit less body roll and more agility you should go for something like the Ford Focus, that is the driver's car. It feels a little bit more exciting than this. But if you're not really into rally cross driving, then this will be the car for you. And I can't really fault it too much. It's just not particularly exciting, but it gets the job done. So, now that we've come to the end of review, it is the time for my verdict. Whilst the Golf might not be the most exciting family car on the road, yes, it might be a little common. I think it is actually one of the best used family cars you can get. If you want outright space, I would go for the Scourge or Octavia. If you want outright driver involvement, I would go for the Ford Focus. If you want the looks, I would go for the Seat Leon. But if you want sort of the best of everything, I would go for the Mark 7 Golf. I think it's better looking than the Mark 8. I'm sure a lot of car guys will agree with me. And you just can't really go wrong with it. So um, yeah, you should buy one, I think. It makes a great used buy. I hope you enjoyed the video. If there is anything I can do to improve my reviews, please let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to follow my Instagram for sneak peeks as the content that is coming and also other bonus things I'm out and about and doing. So I uh, hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.